In this le lesson, we're going to be looking at um, something called hatch patterns. Hatch patterns are basically a series of lines that are joined together in a in a type of special template that we can just apply in um, certain areas. Now, what I have here is looking in floor plan is a toilet, and we're showing floor tiles. Um, at the moment, these floor tiles are just separate lines. The way that we would generally do that is, if I had a line here, I could uh, use the offset command, I could offset, if I just delete all these, I could offset a certain distance. And it might not seem too bad doing it this way, but if you've got a fairly big area uh, and then you want to edit it later on, it's very time consuming to move these lines around. And For instance, even now we have our, um, our center line for our tile right in the middle of the toilet, but we might want to offset that so we have a, a, a tile right here um, instead of the instead of the grout line right at the middle and so I'd have to redraw all those lines that's where hatch patterns can come in now here we have a another room uh, with nothing in it at the moment we're going to use our hatch patterns on here just something you should know um, to use a hatch pattern the boundary that you're using must be closed you can do it with lines but they must ensure that every single corner is is uh, fixed to each other there's no little gaps or anything. A hatch pattern won't work if there is, uh, or it might do strange things, um, depending on how you've got your setup and your drawing. Um, okay, what I have here is at the moment is a polyline. Anytime you use a polyline and close it, it's gonna definitely be a closed boundary. So to start the um, hatch command, we can type bh at the command prompt, and it should bring up a window like this. Um, yours might look like this when you first open it, as you can see down the bottom here, there's a little uh, arrow at the bottom right. If I click on that, it brings out another another portion of the screen. Um, we won't worry about that right now. This is pretty much all we kind of need. Now, if we look at the um, the window that we have here, the main thing we want to look at is when we choose our pat pattern is what's called swatch. So we left click on there. You have a whole bunch of tabs at the top here. And we click on these, it gives us different styles of what we want our patterns to look like. And you can also include custom ones of your own that you may find on the internet or you can make your own. Um, we'll just select this one for now, which is similar to what we're going to try and achieve um, with what we've already shown with the lines. And I've already set in an angle on that beforehand, but generally when you first start off, the angle will be zero degrees and the scale will generally be one. I've just left it at, uh, well, we'll have it at zero and 100 for now. And what we're gonna do now is just to show you how the hatch pattern works is left click on add pick points and then we'll pick inside this window and it's all highlights. And then we just press the space or enter key and it brings us back to this. And if we press okay, we'll have our pattern in there. So that's just the basics of how a patch pattern works. And as you can see, it's all joined, it's all one line. So it's, it's um, a lot easier to work with and it saves a lot more time than say the method we did before where we offset everything. So to edit that, we right click and then we go to um, hatch edit. So back to here. And as you can see in our previous um, hatch that we just made, it's on a 45 degree angle. We can change the angle of that here we're changing it to 45 and then we click OK again it's now changed it um, the other thing we will look at too in this window is if we select our hatch and right click again and go to hatch edit is that we don't really like where the, the tile grout lines are sit, sitting we want to have a line right up the middle if we look down in the bottom left of here um, you've got current origin or you specified origin, which is what we want to do. We want to specify where we want the hatch pattern to begin from. And then below that asks us to click to set the new origin. So we'll left click that and we'll click in the midpoint of this um, boundary. And if we click OK, you can see that it's now identical to the lines that we drew below. So we'll go back to the window again. So select the object, right click, Go to Hatch Edit. We'll look at a few other things in here. Now, we have color. Um, when the hatch pattern is created, 
it's at the moment going by whatever layer color we're currently on it's using that you can also change it to something else if you wanted to so we can even use the select color wheel um, and we could just select color eight and click OK so that means now that the hatch pattern despite the fact what layer on or anything it'll um, it'll be that color eight so if I click OK you can see now it's slightly changed to color eight which is matching what we've got down here you can also select the object and as you can see we have the drop down box here it's already selected color 8 we can also change it here as well if we wanted to so you don't have to do it from the hatch window you can also do it from here and we've got one block okay so we right click our hatch again and we'll go to hatch edit and over here we have two more things that we'll look at we've got um, well pick points is what we did before and there's also select boundary select boundary allows you to select a polyline as a boundary we'll click out of here for a moment and we'll create a polyline so we'll just create a funny shape it doesn't really matter what okay and we go back to bh for bh we can use the select object and then we can select the object now that can be very useful um, technique um, when you have perhaps a problem with a particular hatch where it's not finding the boundary this hatch is not perfect in any way in AutoCAD they've tried to improve it over the years but it still has some problems you'll most definitely run into a situation where using the pick point method is not going to work so sometimes creating or drawing a, 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 a polyline around the area that you need and then selecting that as an object is definitely the way to go another thing to look at is if we create an object in here we go back to bhatch if we select this and then just enter it goes right through our object we might not want that so we right click hatch edit and then we select on select objects and we also select this object press enter it's now left that object out um, you can also select and deselect objects when you're in the hatch edit so we'll just go back to hatch edit and select objects and we, we hold down the shift key to deselect sorry uh, yes shift and left click to deselect and just to left click to select so shift again and left click to deselect and um, that object would be deselected so we can also remove boundaries which is what we've already done we've created a boundary so here it's showing the boundaries we've created so we can create this or select this to remove the boundary and we say okay and that's pretty much gone back to the way it was at the beginning um, that's sort of the basics of um, the hatch patterns but we can also look at a few other things down here um, we've got uh, draw order now draw order is quite useful um, what happens is when it creates a hatch you can choose it to send behind the boundary or uh, send to right to the back so that means it'll be below everything in the drawing and that's generally ideal because often you want your hatches to be at the very bottom of everything and what that means is when you plot you're not going to have any kind of funny thing with line work and everything the hatch will be at the very bottom of the stack of, of lines um, again here we go use the current layer that we're on and I wouldn't worry about this right now um, we can look at that again a, a little bit later on uh, the other thing we have up here is depending on the version of AutoCAD you have is gradient so here we have gradient colors um, you can select a different color if you like and this is different shapes that we've got you can also change the angle similar to what we had on the previous window so we'll use a pick point and as you can see we've got a gradient um, and if we go back to gradient again uh, we can perhaps change this color to a green color and we'll select uh, this one and we'll select an object this time and we'll also select this object and enter and there you go we've created our gradients so the other thing to be aware of in terms of colors and things too when you're looking at colors um, is that there's also there's the main colors in the index color of AutoCAD there's the true color wheel which you can use which can be very helpful when you want to get specific colors if you're coloring in a say elevation or something and then there's color books which is like pantone colors um, 
to get the exact color that you want to sort of uh, match what you're trying to output in terms of color. So this is the basics of um, of Hatch. As I said, we may look at it a little bit further on and uh, get more into what we can do with it. Um, but that's a very useful uh, technique for for um, creating different um, patterns. And the other thing we can do too is we can ch also change these patterns at any time we like. So left click, uh, select the pattern and then uh, right click for the venue and Hatch Edit. And we can click on Swatch and we can change this to perhaps this and we can also preview all this too, mind you. So there's a little preview button down here so we can see. As you can see, the scale's way out there. So I perhaps change this to five. And it's still quite large, maybe one. And that's not too bad. And we can change this angle to perhaps zero. And as you can see, we've got a different, different pattern in there now. So that's the sort of basics of Hatch and what you can do with it. Uh, another thing you can do with Hatch if you wanted to is you can explode it. So X for explode, select the hatch, and it's turned into line work. Um, can be useful in some situations. Uh, ideally, it's best not to do that unless you really have to do it. Um, just otherwise you've lost all your ability to change the hatch and everything because it's now just a bunch of lines. So we'll um, continue on um, with our uh, floor plan uh, and we'll be adding hatches to the floor plan. Mm -hmm.